Hey, I'm Magic Mike, and I've owned so many exotic cars, and I've lost so much money along the way as I've gotten bored and traded in and out of them. But that stops right now. I'm driving 50 supercars over 50 weeks until I find and ultimately buy the perfect exotic supercar keeper for me. Hey guys, I'm gonna show you a little bit of behind the scenes footage of what it's like to film cars here on Drive Show. In fact, I'm gonna take you on a little ride with me through an incident we had with a, well, not so great police officer on our very first day of filming yeah, we Drive Show. This is one of the most BS incidents that I've ever been through with a police officer. And let me be the first to say, let me just go ahead and dispel that I'm some guy that just beats up on police officers and criticizes them. I have friends who are police officers. I have a lot of respect for police officers. Most interactions that I've had with police officers, they're actually kind of entertaining and fun and the guys wanna see the cars. I haven't had a ticket in years. I don't wreck my cars. I'm not some idiot who flies around and beats up these cars. These cars are extremely expensive and I take really good care of my stuff. And on this particular day, well, I ran into Sergeant Slaughter who just really wanted to prove a point. And I will say this guy's reputation kind of precedes him because after this incident, I spoke to some people who knew other officers that work with him and they kind of told me, well, wrong place, wrong time, and certainly wrong guy because he just is known for being this type of guy. So here's what happened. We were driving down a back road. We were not oh, flying around at all. We just had a little burst of speed oh, to shift the exhaust. car so that the car would pop. McLarens will do that. I don't know what it's called, but in the transmission, when you go to shift, it cuts the fuel and then it gives you this nice pop. And I had just put on a new Fab Speed LT style exhaust and man, does it pop. I got the Sport Cats on it too. So it was great. We're just making a little movie to, to make the sound for the car and I was gonna send it to the guys at Fab Speed. Well, I look back and coming around this curve and I see this cop in this expedition just flying around the car behind me, who by the way was helping us, flying around, comes right up on my bumper, and, and like I legitimately have no idea why I'm even being pulled over. Like you'll see it. <laughs> you, you legitimately, you have to have so much space. Uh, we're about to get pulled over, put that down. When the guy asks me, why am I being pulled over? I, I literally, I just said swerving. So why don't you tell me why I stopped you? Swerving. Swerving? Yeah, we were trying to make the car make noise and swerve yeah. and take so the video. Swerving is why. Sir, you go ahead and step out also over there, please. Right. Going on to that side. It's right in the... I'm, uh, I'm going to let you direct me right from over there. Going over there. And, and I only assume that because we came around this corner and I did pull it a little bit close to the yellow line and then back to the inside just to give a little effect for the camera. But I wasn't recklessly swerving. I wasn't crossing lines. I wasn't like just back and forth in the car. It was a little... So I don't know, I really don't know why he's pulling me over. In fact, when you see me pulled over, I am like the guy that any cop is gonna wanna pull over because I, I know how difficult this job is. I would never discount how dangerous it is. And frankly, I really wouldn't want to be in their position having to go up to a stranger's car and not know what's going on. Well, I usually carry a firearm with me and on this day I had it. And so I know when I get pulled over, my hands are put in clear view immediately. And the first thing I say to officers, and just like I said to this guy, how are you? Good, see your driver's license. Sure, first of all, I have a weapon in the car, in the, it's right in my console there. Very good. I'm not gonna put my hands That's anywhere good. near see it for you. Where is the gun? It's in my console here, you're free to reach in and grab it if you'd like. Okay. Well, we're gonna, why don't you come on out of the car and I'm just sure. gonna grab it for my safety. Okay? Absolutely. No, no, I know, I just didn't wanna. I thought this was just some silly stuff. Well, it turns out to me, in my opinion, it's a guy that really just has it out or a serious disdain for exotic car owners, right? And he obviously had that same feeling about me, even though you'll see in the video, I really could not have been any nicer. The guy proceeds to just browbeat me about why have you been pulled over? Why have you been pulled over? I, I'm going, I, I really don't know. Let's continue the conversation. Why did I stop you? You saying swerving? And I'm realizing at this point, look, this is a guy that there's no reasoning with. There's no reason to be, you know, have any conflict whatsoever. It's not gonna get anywhere. So I'm just gonna be as agreeable as possible. And so he starts asking me about speed. What's, What's the, the speed, speed limit? limit? And I'm thinking to myself, I don't know, it's probably 35. I'm not gonna say anything. They're, what we were trying to do was just do like a quick speed up so I could just downshift and make the exhaust loud. Why would you do that, sir? You're, You're willing to risk a reckless driving citation. 
Absolutely not. For the company. Absolutely not. Well, because I could articulate reckless driving right there. I'm saying, I don't know. I didn't realize I was going that fast, sir. I don't. And knowing full well, this guy did not radar me. I knew he didn't clock me. I've got sophisticated radar and laser systems on my car. I, I would know. I also know I wasn't doing that. So I'm perplexed, but I'm thinking, I'm just going to be a nice guy. Hopefully he'll like get rational and just let me go on my way, shake hands. Everything's cool. He'll check my, my record. I'm clean. And, you know, all of this. Not with this guy. This guy then proceeds to tell me that I was doing 70 and a 35 and he also was doing 70. He knew that, he said, because he was doing 70 and could barely catch up to me. Now, I'm no mathematician. I made it through high school and a little bit of college. Somewhere along the line, I seem to remember that little math equation you've probably heard where, you know, there's two trains coming at each other at certain speeds. When do they meet? And you know, if I took a little variation of that and I thought, okay, if you got one car doing 70 and, and another car doing 70, those, those cars aren't ever going to meet, right? They're going to stay apart. Now, this guy, he caught me like, it was almost frightening. You look back, you know, when you got somebody that just flies up on your tail and your instinct is almost a slam on the brake. It's like, holy crap. Not only did he catch me, but he dangerously came up to me. And, you know, the guy, I really don't know where he was coming from. The whole thing just kind Charlie, of went sideways. Charlie, and I was trying to be as cooperative of a person as I possibly could be and as respectful as I could be. And then he started asking me about reckless driving tickets. That's when I started thinking, oh God, this is ridiculous. What am I gonna do? I explained I was making a video just to pop the exhaust. He says, you're willing to risk reckless driving? I say, of course not. Puts me, you know, makes us stand there, goes back to his car and he writes me a ticket for reckless driving. At which point I say to him, at some point I said, listen, not reckless. And he said, I could recite reckless driving for you. He said, you know, it's, it's a... It's a two lane curvy road with driveways all over the place. We work a ton of deer related crashes on this roadway over here. A curvy road, you're flying 70 miles an hour. Again, ridiculous claim. And there's driveways and we work accidents here all the time. Please. So I start thinking to myself, you're admittedly doing 70 miles an hour down this road. I'm sure without the blue lights on, because I would assume I would have seen it. You're the one saying you're doing 70 miles an hour. Obviously, you came around this curve like a bat out of hell. Who's the dangerous one being reckless? Perhaps you ought to look in the mirror, officer, because you're the one being reckless. Did you clock my speed? I'm not writing you for speed. I'm writing you for reckless driving. I was the one shocked by this thing pulling up on me and having to pull over for it and try and figure out what the heck it was all about. But nevertheless, he proceeds. He's got this militant attitude. You'll see it in his video. And what really finally got me is when he actually wrote that ticket for reckless driving. And I said to him, man, there reckless is. driving, that's severe. Yes, sir, it is. Your driving was severe. I don't believe that. Well, uh, difference of opinion, okay? That's why you're being accused of it. Reckless is extreme and I wasn't extreme, and I wanted to say this is excessive. So where it got interesting is I realized that this guy really did not like us filming, and I think this is part of his motivation. I mean, I think the guy really put on a camera attitude, and he started questioning us, and you may or may not see some of that on the footage that we have. We were kind of careful to not be sticking it in his face, but nevertheless, we're gonna film the incident. And um, he made a smart comment about, hey, you guys are filming, you want some good footage, get my body cam. You guys want another audio and video recording of the traffic stop of which you're already doing, and that's fine. Well, that's when the lights went off, and I said, oh, great. If you've got footage of me driving, I'm thinking I'm totally exonerated because I know I wasn't driving recklessly, and this will ultimately prove it. And so I said to him, I said, hey, so you've got a video of me driving? He said, no, body cam. you have cam. a body cam of and me driving? I said, driving? yeah, but do you have video of me driving? Like, did it capture me driving? Do you have a camera of me he driving? He says, I said, body cam, sir. And I asked him a third time, I said, but do you have footage of me driving? Like, well, so That's driving when this guy knows, look, he's busted. Oh, okay. And he tries to send me on my way. And he just goes, he goes, you're free to go. And he tries to end it. Yeah, so there's nothing like getting a reckless driving ticket 
when it's completely undeserved. But you know, you meet those kind of cops that uh, this is why I have a great respect for law enforcement, not for certain officers. There is no way there was any reckless driving going on. There was no endangering of anybody. But yeah, we'll deal with it. So I took his advice and I got his body cam. And like I said, there's nothing on there to show me, show anybody that I was driving recklessly or speeding or anything at all. But what's more interesting to me is I've gone through this frame by frame by frame really slowly. And you can see at the beginning where he's apparently trying to catch up to me. You can see his speedometer. I fail to see where his needle got anywhere near 70. In fact, I can only see from 60 forward. I never saw the needle even get to 60. So really, I think the guy really abused this. I think he just wanted a show of force. I think he didn't want to see himself on camera. And I think, like I said, he just doesn't have a real warm and fuzzy feeling for exotic car drivers. So I had to attend this really informative class and I went with Nick, my camera guy. He had a little offense of his that he had to attend it for. And we had a really entertaining time, certainly learned nothing. I also had spoken to a police officer friend of mine the night of the incident who also thought this was absolutely ridiculous and there's no way a ticket like that would actually stick nor should have been issued. I also have somebody in the judicial system, a judge who I have a connection with, who said exactly the same thing. So the whole thing was BS. Me having to spend thousands of dollars on an attorney was BS. And well, let's just say, thankfully, at the end of the day, with a good attorney and with a good court system that doesn't think, they think objectively instead of subjectively, well, as I expected and as it should have been, bam, case dismissed.